scripture reading today is from Philippians chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. Paul and Timothy, servants of Christ Jesus, to all God's holy people in Christ Jesus at Philippi, together with the overseers and deacons, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. It is right for me to feel this way about all of you since I have you in my heart, and whether I am in chains or defending and confirming the gospel, all of you share in God's grace with me. God can testify how long for all of how I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight, so that you may be able to discern what is best and what may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ, to the glory and praise of God. Now I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that what has happened to me has actually served to advance the gospel. As a result, it has become clear throughout the whole palace guard and to everyone else that I am in chains for Christ. And because of my chains, most of the brothers and sisters have become confident in the Lord and dare all the more to proclaim the gospel without fear. It is amazing that the Apostle Paul can write those words. He's imprisoned. He's in jail. And yet he is above and beyond himself in thanksgiving to God and for all of those who are supporting him, praying for him, and helping him in whatever ways they can. Thanks be to God. Many of you know I work in my ministry currently as a mental health therapist. I see people uh, who are struggling with issues like uh, depression, anxiety, bipolar disorder, uh, whatever it is that, uh, that causes them grief in their personal lives. So when I preach, I try to bring something from my work into the pulpit to give help to, uh, to others who may be wondering how they can be more healthy. What is it they can do to help their souls, their minds, be healthy? So today and next week, when I preach again, I'll be speaking about two kinds of therapy that have been shown to be helpful for people with mental health disorders. A bonus is that according to our Christian faith, they're helpful to just about everyone. This week, I'll be talking about gratitude therapy, thanksgiving therapy, and next week I'll be talking about forgiveness therapy. The psychological community has figured out what the church has known all along. Gratitude and forgiveness can help people, can help lead people to healing and a full and abundant life. Gratitude therapy. In brief, it involves the regular, consistent practice of being grateful and showing gratitude to others. It turns out that being grateful and expressing gratitude is a powerful source of health and wholeness in many people's lives. A number of psychological studies have shown the strong, positive effects of expressing gratitude on psychological health and well-being. For example, Gratitude was shown to enhance an emotional healing and post-traumatic growth after a campus shooting incident at Seattle Pacific University. Gratitude helped people heal psychologically after spinal cord injury. Gratitude helped women reduce stress and fear of recurrence after breast cancer. A regular exercise of expressing gratitude 
helped college students achieve a greater sense of joy and life satisfaction over time than a control group that did not perform the exercise. Simply put, expressing gratitude has been shown to be a powerful way to help people become healthier and happier. The Apostle Paul, whom Toby just read from, was no stranger to gratitude. The beginning of his letter to the Philippians includes these soaring, encouraging words of gratitude. I thank my God every time I remember you, constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you because of your sharing in the gospel from the first day until now. I thank my God every time I remember you. How does it feel to hear that? I thank my God, hear it, addressed to you, every time I remember you. Both the giver and the receiver have much to gain when we say thank you. Not only did it help encourage the church to hear thanks, it helped Paul himself to feel better and rise above his situation when he said thanks. Their context makes Paul's words all the more amazing. First, I mentioned before that Paul wrote the letters to the Philippians while he himself was imprisoned, experiencing tremendous stress. He had been beaten, physically beaten, and was now in prison for refusing to worship the emperor and for publicly expressing his faith in Jesus Christ. Second, many of the Philippians themselves were actively being persecuted because of their faith. Being grateful helped Paul find the energy to persevere and continue to boldly share his faith. Being thanked helped the church grow stronger. Thanksgiving was flowing all around, and it helped the fledgling church renew its strength, grow wings like eagles, walk and not be faint. Giving thanks helps to build relationships and keep them strong. Back in the 1930s, the Jewish philosopher and theologian Martin Buber wrote a book in which he explained that our human interactions are of two kinds. The book is called I and Thou. The first he called the I-It relationship. This is when we have no vital concern for other people. We are detached from them. Let's say you stop at a restaurant for lunch and the server takes your order. That's back in the days before COVID, right? Now we stand outside and the server gives us a bag. You don't know the server and you have no reason to. You don't know about the, the broken marriage or their concerns about their children or sore feet or whatever. The server is a person who primarily provides you a service. Your relationship with this person is essentially the same as to a robot who could deliver food right to you. This is a subject to object, I, it relationship. The other way in which we relate to others, says Buber, is the I, thou relationship. This is when the other person ceases to be a something to us and becomes a someone. I, thou, is where I view you, not in terms of what you can do for me, but in terms of who you are as yourself. And sincerely thanking someone forces us to see the other person as thou and not as it. And that changes both the other person and us. That's something that a man named John Kralik discovered as 2008 dawned, Kralik was living in one room in Los Angeles, separated from his wife, and watching his law practice sinking in hard times. 
But he started the year by taking a walk in the mountains. And on that walk, he became aware of an inner voice saying, until you learn to be grateful for the things that you have, you will not receive the things that you want. So he decided to begin writing thank you notes. And he started with his oldest son. At Christmas, the son, a grown man, had given him a one cup at a time coffee maker. With this gift, Kralik said, his son was saying that he knew something about me. I'm a notorious caffeine freak. But when he sat down to send his son a thank you note, he realized that he didn't know the address. Kralik, who has since written the book titled 365 Thank Yous, The Year of a Simple Act of Daily Gratitude Changed My Life, said, Realizing you do not have the address of someone really takes you out of yourself and helps you focus on the other person. You begin asking questions such as, where are they living? How are they doing? We get so wrapped up in the day-to-day -day that we lose touch. I decided to hand write a note, he said, rather than send him one that the machine created. Doesn't that sound kind of I, thou? In any case, when Kralik called his son to get the address, his son said he'd like to come by and take out, take out his dad to lunch. And to his surprise, while they were at lunch, the son repaid a $4,000 loan that Kralik had forgotten about. So afterward, Kralik wrote his son another note, thanking him for paying the loan, and admitting that he really needed the money. As the year progressed, Kralik made it a practice to handwrite someone a thank you note every day. And that eventually included family members, clients, and even the server at the shop where he got his morning coffee. And to his surprise, gratitude became his way back to success and harmony. I was at the point of financial collapse, but I decided to keep saying thank you, said Kralik. I wrote to other attorneys and to good clients. One colleague said, when you thanked me, I appreciated it. When we sent you a client, we didn't know how you felt about it. He also wrote to people he'd lost touch with, some of whom now have renewed the friendship. When the year was up, he stopped writing the notes briefly, but said, that didn't work out for me. He resumed the practice and now continues to write a note of thanks every day. Kralik admits that he didn't gain control of the universe. And he says that there continued to be some setbacks. But he says, in the act of being thankful, which is, after all, good manners, my world began to thrive. Indeed, Kralik eventually became a judge on the Los Angeles Superior Court. Paul's practice of thanking God for those among whom he worked was not just a habit, but a genuine expression. It encouraged the people in the churches and made Paul a better person. We can help our church and make it more vital by thanking God for the faith, hope, and love of our fellow worshipers, and by thanking them directly as well. We can help our family, friends, and acquaintances, and outright strangers by thanking them. And we can become better people and better Christians ourselves by taking the time to express our gratitude. So here is the exercise I give many of my clients. Every day this week, go home and write a list of 10 things, or more, or less, whatever, 10 things 
that you're grateful for. It helps to look for 10, because maybe then you'll find 11 or 12 or 13. Write down that list. And write it again and again. And then check yourself by the end of the week. My hope is that you feel better. You feel more connected to the people around you. You feel like you're an important part of the universe. Because, in fact, you will be. There really is a lot to be grateful for. Thanks be to God. Amen.